Auto Tank. Written by Cynic on Rails. Read and adapted for audio by TARDIS 9. The Fat Controller had laid out some special services for the summer. One of these was a motor rail service for passengers travelling to Sodor from places in England, Scotland and Wales. One place these passengers loved visiting the most was Duck's Branch Line. So the Fat Controller had assigned Oliver to be the designated motor rail engine. Your auto equipment makes you the perfect engine for this service he explained to Oliver. It's just what's needed to help make sure these services run without any delay. Oliver is a Great Western auto tank, which means that he is fitted with special auto equipment that allows his driver to control him from inside Isabel or Dulcie. This means that Oliver doesn't need to run around his train at the end of a journey. Instead, his driver connects the auto equipment, climbs aboard the auto coach furthest the train, and they head back down the line in reverse. Oliver is very proud of his auto equipment. Every morning, Oliver was to collect the motor rail wagon from the big station along with his passengers and push it down the line up to Holtrock. There, he had to shunt it into a siding with a special ramp for the passengers to collect their cars. And in the evening, the cars would be reloaded onto the motor rail wagon for Oliver to take back to the big station. Because Oliver always entered the station in reverse, he would leave his coaches, collect the wagon from the siding and head back to the platform to wait for his driver to reconnect the auto equipment. This, along with an easier changeover at the big station, saved time compared to the other engines. This was why the Fat Controller had chosen Oliver for the job. But to hear Oliver talk, you'd have thought it was for quite another reason indeed. (laughs) And he called me perfect, he boasted to the others that night. It's really only fitting that an engine of such prestige would be given such an important job. Ah, you can keep your silly job, huffed Douglas. Whatever happened to just travelling in a coach? Why do the passengers need to take their cars with them? Hey, put in Donald. And all that yapping from those cars, where's an engine out? (laughs) Besides, chuckled Duck. It's quite fitting that you're handling the motor rail services, being an auto tank and all. Oh, won't be long until the fat controller replaces your whistle with a horn. Oliver rolled his eyes. Oh, you're all just jealous, he snorted and drifted off to sleep. The next day, Oliver took charge of the motor rail service for the first time. Cars on the rails? exclaimed Bulgy from his field in horror. Whatever is this world coming to? Oliver handled the service splendidly and the passengers were very pleased. Such a lovely service and what a wonderful engine. One of the smoothest I've ever ridden on. Many of them took Oliver's picture and some even took his number. This only made Oliver more puffed up in the smoke box, and he made sure to let everyone know just how perfect he was. You should ask the Fat Controller to give you order fittings of your own, he puffed to Duck one morning. It'd save you the trouble of having to lug your ugly bunker to the other end of your trains. At least my bunker doesn't end up in turntable wells, whooshed Duck crossly. You're still going on about that? Oliver asked loftily. That's old news. The real news is how I've been transforming your branch line into the best it's ever been. Wouldn't surprise me if everyone starts calling it Oliver's branch line now. Duck nearly burst a safety valve at this. A few days later, Oliver arrived at Holtroff with his first motor rail service of the day. As usual, he was still boasting in the same swanky manner. 
Ha! Oh, it's a pity the others aren't auto-fitted like me, he said to himself. But I suppose that greatness does have a price. Oliver's driver was about to shunt the motor rail wagon into its siding when the station master came running up. The inspector's on the phone. He wants to speak with you, he said. So the driver and fireman walked to the station master's office. But they forgot to put on Oliver's brakes. Oliver sizzled happily as he waited for his crew to come back. He was too busy thinking of what he'd say to Duck when they next met to notice his wheels beginning to move. By the time Oliver realised what was happening, it was too late. The motor rail wagon crashed through the siding and onto the road, but Oliver, with no brakes, kept on going. He slid off the rails before finally coming to a stop with his wheels firmly in the asphalt. Wrecked cars lay all over the road, and a mob of angry passengers surrounded Oliver on all sides as his driver shut off steam and applied the brakes. Soon, the fat controller arrived. You are a very silly engine, he said crossly. We cannot waste time bringing a crane down here, so you shall stay till we are ready. It serves you right for wanting to be more of an auto than a tank. Oliver stayed quiet as the fat controller left to pacify the passengers. As Oliver waited to be hoisted to safety, the other engines would pass by and tease him. <laughs> I thought auto tanks were meant to stay on the rails, laughed Donald. <laughs> you know, being a road vehicle doesn't suit you, Ollie. I know you're an auto tank, but how will we be a dignity? Remarked Douglas. Oh, if you wanted to go on a road so badly, you should have asked the workmen to fit you with some new car tyres. Then you'd really be the perfect auto tank, chortled Duck. Oliver said nothing. That night, he was lifted to safety and taken to the works for repairs. Once he returned, the other engines were pleased to see that Oliver stayed unusually quiet about the topic of auto equipment for quite some time. <laughs>